Detective Comics number 40 from June of 1940 saw the first appearance of Basil Carlo. He was a B-list movie actor who starred in many horror films of the time, and would take on the likeness of one of the characters he played, called Clayface to commit his crimes. He hears that a movie he was in, named Dread Castle is being remade without him, so he tracks down and kills all the actors one by one, in the order in which he killed their characters, in the original version of the film. Batman and Robin confront him on the castle set, and put an end to it all though. Carlo was inspired by Lon Chaney Sr., known for his roles in such films as The Phantom of the Opera, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, and the much sought after lost film London After Midnight, who was nicknamed the Man of a Thousand Faces. Basil Carlo's name is derived from Boris Karloff and Basil Rathbone, two other notable horror film actors circa 1940. In his first appearance, Carlo was just a bitter actor who refused to share the spotlight. He wore makeup to portray the fictional Clayface character he had on screen, nothing more, nothing less. The Basil Carlo Clayface would appear a few more times throughout the Golden Age and Silver Age of comics to battle Batman, but it was another version of Clayface who would make the character iconic. Enter Detective Comics number 298 from December of 1961, the first appearance of Matt Hagen. Hagen was a treasure hunter who finds a pool of radioactive protoplasm in a cave that transforms him into a clay-like creature. Due to his new malleable physiology, Hagen can transform into anything he sees fit, from a snake, to a buzzsaw, to an eagle, a lion, even a centaur, okay? He uses his newfound powers for financial gain, but the only downside is that he has to continuously immerse himself in the protoplasm to keep them. Hagen would appear several more times looking to find a way to prolong his powers, which eventually resulted in Batman using Clayface's powers against him, and destroying the protoplasmic pool. Hagen would end up recreating the effects of the pool through chemistry and impersonate Superman even, but his concoction works for even less time than the original substance did. Batman the Animated Series introduced Clayface to the mainstream audience and altered his backstory, many elements of which have been used within the comics since. The two-parter, Feet of Clay, told the story of Matt Hagen, infused with a few sprinkles of Basil Carlo. Hagen was a film actor who got disfigured in a car accident and gets addicted to a facial cream called Renew You, given to him by Roland Daggett. Hagen attempts to steal a large quantity of Renew You from Daggett Industries, but is caught and Daggett Schoon's pour a container of it down his throat, which gives him the power to shapeshift. The series shows Hagen as he tries to cure himself of his condition, Mudslide being an underrated gem. The Detective Comics Annual from 2018 told an origin very similar to the one found in Batman the Animated Series, but swapped out Matt Hagen for the original Clayface, Basil Carlo. Carlo had become something more in line with the Hagen version of Clayface back in 1989, in Secret Origins Volume 2, number 44, when he injects himself with blood samples of two other Clayfaces, Preston Payne and Sandra Fuller. Yes, there are more of them, but it wasn't until the Detective Comics Annual that he had the more notable and recognizable origin. Since Clayface's inception, there have been a total of eight different versions of this character, many of which have formed the criminal group known as the Mud Pack. The aforementioned Preston Payne and Sandra Fuller are two of them, but there has also been Cassius Payne, Peter Malley, Todd Russell, and Johnny Williams. It's actually getting kind of ridiculous. Though all these Clayfaces have their own unique distinctions, none will compare to the two originals, Basil Carlo and Matt Hagen. I enjoy Clayface because he's like a classic movie monster come to life. What makes him stand out from a lot of other Batman villains is that he actually has a form of superpower, a special ability if you will. Clayface is an extremely dangerous opponent for Batman because of that very reason. His skill set is different than most challenges the Dark Knight goes up against. On a physical battlefield, Batman has a huge disadvantage because combat won't really work unless he manages to freeze Clayface or something, but the environment would need to provide him with that luxury. 
Apart from that, in most cases, he needs to use his superior intelligence to win or come prepared. What are your thoughts on Clayface? Is he one of the best Batman villains? I think he's one of the more challenging opponents for him at the very least. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and share it if you can to anyone who might enjoy it. It helps me out. Stay tuned for more content, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.